Obamacare, health care under the threat of fines, arrest, and jail time. Change you can believe in. This picture look uh, familiar? How about Chris Carney care? Huh? That's what he supports, folks. He feels that anyone who does not buy into the uh, approved health plans um, should be subject to fines, jail, and arrest. I saw him say it down in uh, Canton, Pennsylvania. Um, very, very interesting old uh, Chris Carney. Um, essentially, uh, there was a time, and hopefully your, your memories aren't that short, when George Bush was President of the United States, no great deal, except he had uh, all these town hall meetings and he had people who were really excited about the fact that they had solved their health insurance dilemma. They had bought or uh, started uh, health savings plans, which meant tax-free money was going into a banking account which could be taken out tax-free to pay for medical bills. And they bought high deductible health plans where the premiums were very low because the, the chance of getting a serious disease is really not that high. And such plans actually paid a higher percentage of the, um, the costs than your regular uh, plans. But the, um, the issue was that this was touted as being great. President uh, Bush said, uh, wow, good idea. People said, thank you, Mr. Bush. And now these same plans are going to be deemed illegal. If, you, if they, people stick with these and don't buy the Obama plan, uh, they, will go to, they will be fine and they'll go to jail just like me. In fact, most of the plans today, I shouldn't say most, I don't know that for a fact, but a lot of the plans today will not be acceptable. Anything with a high deduction, they say, whoa, we can't have, have high deductions. So, the, um, so they want to cover more and more crap and um, the rates are going to go up, up and up and up and not only that uh, they're going to encourage um, they're going to bring people who totally did not take care of themselves um, uh, participated in very unsafe uh, sexual practices um, did their drugs did everything and now society is supposed to help them out um, you know up in canada they don't have have any anti-smoking uh, programs. You know why? Because they know that if people die, get lung cancer, they're dead in five years. So therefore, uh, you know, they actually are not a burden to the, the health system. As long as they do that, you know, in their older ages after they retired. You know, the sooner you die after you retire, the, the better friend you are to the government. And that's really the unofficial attitude of all our, all our um, elected officials. Um, we are only as good as the um, the income we generate for the government. Um, it was interesting that um, Congressman Carney, when asked about uh, tort reform as, as part of the answer for um, this whole health care dilemma, he poo pooed it. He said, ah, big deal down in Texas, it, it, it was unsuccessful. Well, um, Chris Carney obviously did not really look into it because. The reason why they created tort reform down in Texas is because they needed doctors down there. And they found that when they had the doctors liable for less, less um, large settlements, then their insurance premiums would not be that great and therefore it would be less expensive to practice down in Texas than in other states. So while Pennsylvania apparently has a shortage of doctors in certain areas, um, Congressman Carney is, was boasting about some program, which I'm sure, I guess, to have a, a, a what do you call it, a medical college here, as if people are going to get their medical uh, degrees here and then stay here. Um, they're going to go down to Texas too. So instead of following um, Texas's approach, um, you know, Carney's into spending money, um, and that's typically you know what what he's all about. But what really gets me is he sees no difference in anybody who doesn't have the Obama plan. This is health, health, health insurance at gunpoint. And Obama lied. And I asked Carney, I said, at least you could, you could call the guy a liar. And he is, Obama is a liar. And what's very sad is um, Representative uh, Joe Wilson called him a liar and then basically was all apologetic. The guy told the biggest lie in the history of mankind in terms of dollars and cents and, uh, and no one's holding him account. No one in the media is saying, hey, Obama, you lied. You're going to be putting people in jail for something that you said you, you were against? I mean, this, this is really 
it's unbelievable, but yet no one will um, say anything about it. The only thing that's that's for debate now in the health plan, you know, is just the public option. They're banging it back and forth, and it really doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned because the big issue is whether it's mandatory or not. If it wasn't mandatory, it wouldn't matter what they did. But now the insurance companies, if they can get rid of the public option, that means that everybody has to buy their product, period. Boom, you don't have a choice. Isn't that wonderful? You think they're going to keep the prices low? You think they can keep the prices low when they have to include everybody for everything? No, there's something, there's something wrong here. And um, apparently, if you're a Christian scientist or you're a Mennonite or a, um, or a um, Amish, um, you can get out of this. And there's also American Family Association has a, uh, it's not an insurance program, it's kind of like a, a, minis a ministry uh, where you um, send money to people in need. And if you get in trouble, they send money to you. You spend, I think, an upfront money of, I don't know, 160 170 $200. And then once a month, you'd send a check to a family uh, in need. And it's apparently, this will be a part of the exclusion. If it is, I, I would uh, definitely opt for that because it would be almost be like tithing, and I'd be helping actually people directly as opposed to um, uh, creating a bigger bureaucracy and creating more federal jobs with more pensions and more insurance policies. I mean, this this is unbelievable. And now we have ClimateGate. ClimateGate is basically communications they found proving that the environmentalists have been keeping information from surfacing because it did not go along with their global warming um, scenario. And they should uh, you should demand from your senators and your congressmen or women uh, that they take old, fat old, bloated Al Gore and have him testify before con uh, Congress and throw his rump in jail. This is the biggest, the biggest uh, spoof that's ever going on. Unfortunately, we were ready to sign a contract or a treaty that would have just basically bankrupted us total. And they're working on cap and trade, um, uh, which is going to cost more jobs. And uh, if you listen to this Obama, uh, you'll, you'll get fat without eating. He's a liar. He told the biggest lie. And uh, I'm so happy those people were able to sneak into the, uh, the White House. I am so, so happy because it proves their lack of security, their lack of concern. They want to be so politically correct. And it was that same political correctness which, which allowed that guy down in Fort Hood to kill all those innocent people. And uh, Obama still doesn't get it. it was the, the, that, he was a sell. He was no different than those guys in, um, in um, um, England that were recruited and blew up all those buses. So we have some serious problems here, folks, and this mandatory insurance is, is such a it's, it's a, it's on the slippery side, it's a slippery slope. Once, it, once you can justify that, you can justify anything. I mean, name one thing you couldn't justify. Um, I told um, Congressman Carney, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're for the general good of the people, why don't you just take everything from the top 2% of the population and split it, you know, split it up? And, um, he didn't like that too much. But his concept as far as that tort reform really got me. And then also he's, he's boasting about how uh, his, his kills, uh, he, he flies apparently when he's not a, when he's not a uh, congressman, he's a military man, which they shouldn't allow to happen. Uh, anyhow, so he's boasting about he's making these kills with a predator. You know, who knows if he killed any innocent people, but we won't hear about that. But the fact of the matter is that he makes himself out to be a hero. I mean, flying a predator from a, from a desk is not like a, a pilot who takes a high-performance aircraft off and goes through flak and everything and, and, and assumes all kinds of risks on flying there and dropping his munitions and getting back. That's what I call a hero. So um, Carney is trying to just puff himself up like some, some kind of war hero and it won't fly. In fact, it, it, it's, it's pathetic when you think about it. And he also badmouthed the president of Afghanistan in, in, in public, which wasn't very nice. Uh, they had some conversations, and you'd think he would honor, you know, uh, basically a certain amount of confidentiality instead of uh, bad mouthing the guy. You know, he wasn't impressed with uh, the president of Afghanistan. Well, I'm not impressed with you, uh, uh, Chris Khan. You lied. You really, um, you really screwed us over. Take care.